Hey everyone, I'm Gabe, this is Christina, and we are Bellwether Fields. We are a cabin restoration project, a log cabin from the 1700s, uh, in the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains in Central Virginia. And we're so glad you found us on YouTube. What we want to do is really share everything that we are doing. We've been working on this project for about two years now, so we've been sharing a lot on Instagram and Facebook, which has been an amazing experience, and we thought the YouTube community is such a place where we have like learned so many of the things that we do on this cabin and we just wanted to just share our experience and, and vlog about it here on this on this site. It's important to note that we have no skills. We had no skills coming to this project. So YouTube has been a huge part of what we're doing yes. and it's just now we're kind of after two and a half years we're at a point where we feel like we actually have something to share. So we'd like to share more and interact more with people that are out there and maybe are interested in doing some of the things that we're doing. Yeah, which I mean, that would be great because the log cabin community actually is really, really small <laughs> and the YouTube videos on uh, log cabin restoration are very few and far between. So I just kind of felt like we wanted to share on YouTube as well because uh, we were looking for a lot of help when we were restoring our cabin and if we could help anyone at all, that would just be really great. I feel like we would just be giving back. So that's would be awesome. So please give us a like and subscribe, especially if you want to hear more from us. It really encourages us to make more content for you. So this weekend we're down at the cabin and we're going to talk about the loft restoration that we're doing. We have been working on our loft really hardcore for the past nine months. Um, there have been some work that we did over the past two years, mainly with the chinking, um, so what's in between the logs here. And then we've been kind of just going full steam ahead. We really want a real bed. So like that's the motivation. Cause, that's, that's the carrot. Because <laughs> like we, we sleep on a air mattress, which is so much better than the camping that we were doing previous to that. But a real bed would be a huge, huge win for yeah. this restoration. We went camping to porch to floor to air mattress. And in two weeks, hopefully, we will have a real bed up there. Yeah, but no promises because everybody knows how restorations go. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we have decided to do for the loft and uh, the choices that we made up there. So first, I guess, uh, why plaster? We chose plaster very specifically for the upstairs project. So number one is I think that we hate drywall. <laughs> We both grew up in suburban houses that just had drywall in them. Um, Gabe lived in Europe for a while and I've traveled extensively through Europe and I just really like the warmth and the character that plaster brings to a home. I think it's just a much more natural material that really uh, helps the house breathe and it just like, it, you know, it's just so smooth to touch and it's just very tactile. It's just a wonderful material to use. So we decided we had no experience at all doing plaster at all. Uh, but we decided that that's what we were going to do in the loft and we were going to plaster the entire loft ceiling and the walls ourselves by hand. Mm -hmm. and if, if you just look at the rest of the house, this is wood, you got stone, there's lots of contoured surfaces, there's lots of rough kind of wood stuff around and drywall is super straight. It's just too many straight neat lines to fit with this cabin. So the texture part was a big part of why we wanted to do the, the plaster instead. The other thing is we just wanted to also cheat some of the height. It is a loft attic space, so it isn't a full height ceiling. And Gabe is about six feet tall, so he needs any extra inches we can get. And so before we had like the roof rafter and then the drywall was like right on top of the roof rafter. This way we could have the roof rafter and then the plaster would be like slightly back so that there'd be just a little bit of extra space or perceived room um, so that when we're walking around, Gabe kind of hits his head less. <laughs> It's, meaningful. it's a meaningful amount of space. It's three or four inches worth of space, which makes it doable for a bedroom without me bashing my head every time I want to go up there. And then I guess the next piece of using plaster was that we got to use lime paint, which is so great. A natural product. Uh, not, it has a natural antimicrobial factor, a natural antifungal factor, and it is naturally kind of a bug repellent. And of course, out in the woods, in a log cabin, you're going to have a lot of bugs. So any little extra bit of protection that we could get um, is just an added bonus. It also helps the wall breathe. You know, it helps, you know, with moisture issues. There aren't as many moisture issues when you have like a natural product like plaster, and then you have a natural coating over it. So we didn't want to put any like plasticky coatings over top of the plaster again. Like I think lime paint, it's very soft. It's almost like a powdery finish. So when you touch it, it's very uh, tactile and very soothing. And it's just, 
you know, something wonderful to envelop yourself in a bedroom space. For the last for the last few visits, what we've been working on up there has been prepping to prep for the paint, which is a little frustrating to do that much prep, but it's really made a humongous difference. The the before and afters, we were just kind of shocked at just cleaning the logs. Mm -hmm. The logs, these logs, we think the upstairs logs were added in like the mid 1800s, like maybe Civil War, maybe post Civil War era, and these things haven't been cleaned ever. Not, not, not to begin with. Not. I don't. I don't think the pioneers ever. did that. I don't think. They were, I don't think they. Yeah. I don't think they were scrubbing with dishwater. Mm -hmm. Some of our logs actually still have the old bark on them from their from their tree. So I, I mean, yesterday I was just like cleaning bark on a tree. So imagine yourself going outside to a tree that's growing in your yard and then just cleaning it with soap and water. That's kind of what it was like. But it's made it's made a humongous difference to the the, the clean, neat lines of the rafters, like. The logs are glowing instead of just this kind of like rust colored muted kind of thing that they were doing before mm -hmm. and uh so now that we've got it ready we're going to start we're going to start painting we're going to start painting today the idea is that we want to get the first coat on everything today if we can uh, that means all the uh, ceiling panels all of the wall panels and all of the chink lines all the chink up there lines. yep yep because everything is plaster up there even the chink lines so like this line right here behind me that you can see that's plaster also time for us to get going we got to get this show on the road we got a three-hour drive back today that we have to make so the sooner we finish up the sooner we can pack up and go yeah and we'll show you guys how, how it's going during the process all right all of our painting stuff for the lime paint. This big mamma jamma is five gallons of antique white from Portola. We'll link to them down below. They are a company out in California. Then we have our little handy paint pails for painting. This is a specialty lime brush that we're gonna use. And then we bought a bunch of other like assortment of little brushes. But this this is actually our second this is our second experience with lime paint. We used lime paint last year, but this is different. This actually came mixed. The lime paint we got last time was not mixed. Right. It was powdered, and we had to mix it ourselves. And this is probably user error at some level. But it became more like it, it would the the sediment would come out, and we would just put more water in to try to mix it and just diluted the paint and it didn't bind very well with the wall. So we're hoping the fact that this is pre-mixed is gonna be a little bit more helpful. Yeah, it's just a lid. Mm -hmm. Stir stick. Stir it up. I'm gonna suck so bad at this, I'm gonna ruin something. And I've learned to just embrace that at this point. Have uh, any words of wisdom so far? <laughs> just move fast. <laughs> Start really fast. This plaster, and you just need a wet edge at all times so you don't get any marks. And we're hustling. It's like a workout. Do you do an X strokes? Is that like a thing? So there's two kinds of strokes that you can do. I guess like one's like this, but we always do the X strokes. This gives even more texture and pattern. Even though there's already, you can see like a lot of texture there already. You just want all that to like blend together with the paint. Yeah, and like going going up and down, not just X down, but X up. That helps get into the like all these like little holes and like little dents and stuff like that. All the texture in there, and try to get in there. got almost halfway there yep and we learned a little bit about putting lime paint on there it is uh 
It's going to dry a little darker than what it is now, so we're not going to freak out about it being light. And we know that we're going to have to put in a few coats, like two or three coats. So no surprise there. Uh, the cutting in is the hard part, for me at least. It is, you've got, it, like it'd be nice if we had a like flat open surface of wall to paint on in some ways. We wouldn't be able to quit in the middle of the day, but um, if the cutting in is so time consuming and just, for me, it's the detail part and I'm just struggling with that part a little bit, but otherwise it's okay to work with. Like it's, yeah, fine. I think it's fine. It washes off really easily. It does get all over you. I mean, it's like all over me right now. Yeah, you're, but... you're speckled white. Yeah, I mean, it's a very like thin paint. So as you're painting over your head, it's going to fall on you, but it cleans off really easily and it's, there's nothing bad in it. So I'm not really worried about it. Um, it's just a lot of painting and you have to do it all by hand with a brush. So it just takes longer. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pack up all of our stuff and drive our three hour drive home and we will see you guys next time.